So hi, Kevin. Hi, Ankita. Uh, thanks for uh, taking time to put in more information about ODCL. It's a, a new course, not say uh, not much new, but it's still a uh, few informations are not there with the students and a lot of misinformation about this course. So before we start our complete detailed session, uh, let's start with the introduction uh, so that if you, guys, if you guys can introduce yourself and most importantly, as this course has a work experience, so a brief about your work experience would also help aspirants to know key what sort of people with what uh, what work background or academic background join into this particular course. So uh, Kevin and Ankita, whoever wants to start first can go ahead. Yeah, sure. So hello, my name is Ankita More and I'm a first year student of MA in ODCL at TISS Mumbai. So before joining this course, I have worked with Infosys in a coding profile for two years and I'm an electrical engineer by education graduation. Yeah. Kevin, you can. Hi, thanks, Ankita. So, hello, everyone. I am Kevin. I am also a first year MA ODCL uh, student in TIS Mumbai. Uh, before joining this course, uh, I had worked for almost four and a half years, uh, two years with Teach for India as a teaching fellow. And then, post that, I joined their incubation cell called TFIX and worked with some social entrepreneurs there. Post which, I was freelancing and consulting few entrepreneurs for five to six months. And I am a mathematics graduate uh, from Delhi University. Great. Uh, TFI uh, fellowship is well recognized and well appreciated throughout India and abroad even. So can we start? Uh, we have a detailed um, uh, PPT that you want to present to students, which covers everything in an organized manner. So let's uh, walk us through that. And then we have a question, a set of questions which students have. I have those questions with me. So I'll quickly ask those and we'll try to cover more of the questions part once you finish that presentation or whatever things that you have that you want students to go through it. Sure, I'll share sure that. All right. Is it visible? Yeah, perfectly. Yes. And just put a slideshow. Yes. Great. Good, then I'll start. Uh, so yeah, for the next uh, 10 to 12 minutes, we'll take you through an overview of uh, ODCL program, organization development, change and leadership in TISS Mumbai. Uh, next slide. So let's start off with why our program in the first place, right? And uh, as you can see, the world is like really going through a lot of change, dynamic change uh, and kind of change that nobody is even foreseeing. Our course is made especially for uh, situations like this where OD professionals or organization development professionals go take the organization or their clients through a planned intervention, planned change intervention, keeping in mind the behavioral, structural and technological changes needed to adapt. Right. So it's, it's a very comprehensive course, uh, which caters to any industry. It's ag industry agnostic. And what we learn in this course can be applied in any kind of industry, whether it is automobile, construction, IT, social sector. Right. So it's a, a wide range of application. And uh, that's why it's like all the more reasons it's relevant in the current time. And it's up and coming field in India. Okay, next. So give you a crux of the program. Uh, it is a quite an intensive and rigorous two years course uh, planned designed by TISS Mumbai. If you see here, we have four field, uh, field work projects. Each semester, towards the end of the semester, we get mapped to an organization or an industry partner where we work with them for a month and try to apply whatever we have learned in the semester as interns in these organizations. So. Uh, we really, towards the end of two years, we get a lot of hands-on experience uh, with the industry as well as academics, right? Along with that, we have uh, something called summer internship where everybody is uh, needed to work for at least two months uh, at the end of the first year. And uh, we get like really brilliant opportunities. focus is also on research dissertation. TIS is known for its research. Uh, we put a lot of focus on uh, finding your own passionate topics and doing a research uh, on it. It can be around organization development, management, or as 
diverse as social work, entrepreneurship, or anything, right? And we get supported uh, by faculties in TISS Mumbai. Uh, something that is uh, very much needed to apply for this course is a minimum of two years work experience. Uh, so by 1st May 2022, if you have worked for at least 24 months, then you are eligible to apply for uh, this program this year. And uh, we also have something uh, called uh, Leadership as Service project where you get mapped to a social impact organization and you take the entire OD intervention, you work with the founders, support leadership and help them take through an OD transformation project. And currently we are at this uh, juncture where we are mapped to these organizations as well. So all in all, we have like a very holistic academic as well as experiential learning in this course. This is, and now in this side, you can see uh, overall highlight uh, of the course, like I shared, this share gives you an understanding of the total credits. In total, we have 86 credits planned for two years, um, distributed among 20 ODCL courses, leadership as service, electives, field immersions. So if you see the distribution, a lot of credits are given to the hands-on experience that we uh, get when we map to the industry. Um, and yeah, dissertation obviously has a lot of focus as well. Right, so now I'll touch upon the overall placements uh, statistics for the current senior batch. Uh, as you can see, the highest CTC is around 42.09 LPA with an average of 25.4 and a median of 24 uh, LPA. Our, uh, and it, we have shown like a really great growth compared to last year. It was just 18.17 and we have come to 25.4 LPA this year uh, with an average work experience of uh, 44 months among the batch. And if you see closely, then we have 30% PPO holders. So very successful summer internship was also part of their uh, achievements for a senior batch. Right. So if to, to give you an idea about how does the placements or uh, opportunities look like post ODCL course, uh, you can have like a snapshot over here. Most of us uh, students are going into consulting uh, sector along with pharma, manufacturing and others. And the roles are around change management consultant, human resource, uh, HRVP and learning development partners. And these are some of our uh, industry partners, renowned names in the industry and also providing great experience uh, to our students. Yeah. So Over to you. Yeah, sure. So this is about life at this uh, TIS, TISS Odyssey, how it looks like. So we haven't been to campus yet, and we hope that we'll get to uh, see our campus uh, soon. So uh, these are some of the activities that take place at TISS. The first being Samagam. So it's an alumni, alumni meet where we get to meet our seniors and uh, who are doing great in the field of ODs and they are uh, really killing it in their careers as well. So get, we get to learn from their experiences uh, through this platform. Then there is transitance. So here it is like, uh, so this consists of various fun activities and other cultural activities. So, and the other is ODX. So ODX, these are the webinars uh, which are hosted by us. Uh, and the uh, many management, the people, the toyans from the field of management. So they deliver the ODX webinars. So uh, we had two ODX sessions so far. And for that, we had Professor Kim Cameron from the Michigan University who has written several books on the positive leadership. And another was Mr. Arun Myra. So who was the... Uh, former member of India's Planning Commission. So apart from that, I would say that there is a lot of peer learning happening in our course because if you see the diversity in our class of 34 people, so uh, so there are people arrange, uh, having experience ranging from two years to seven to eight ex years of experience. So even if you look like Kevin, so he has experience in social sector and I have the experience in IT background. So there is a lot of diversity here. And also there are various master classes which are arranged by the capability building team uh, where we get to learn from the industry leaders, the current practices being followed in the field of OD and even the human resources. So it's a good experience overall. Yeah. So coming to the selection process. So as you all must be aware, so the first is TISNET. 
so i would say uh, every mba or the management aspirant should target this exam because uh, on the uh, difficulty level it is quite on the lower side as compared to other exams but it is a qualifier exam so it's an important one so the structure of this exam uh, is like this so general awareness forms the major part in it with 40 questions on it and the quantitative aptitude and logical reasoning for 30 marks and english proficiency for 30 marks so uh, again the in second section logical reasoning forms very little part in uh, the 30 questions and again there is some cutoff for general awareness that is 14 uh, 14 marks for this section. The one base thing is that it has no negative marking. So you may try your luck in this as well. Yeah, and this exam is common for admission to all the uh, programs uh, uh, of MA at TISS. Then the second stage is uh, to smart. I think there are no updates about this yet, but OPI will be there uh, this time. Yeah. And uh, uh, for the last year, uh, for the last year, there was a uh, TISMART, which was supposed to happen, but it got cancelled due to the COVID scenario. And we had uh, the online assessment, which consisted of the online uh, personal interview and the extempo. So after uh, after all this uh, assessments, there will be a final merit list about your selection. Yeah. So that's it from our side. So you can always contact for any queries related to this exam to our art team. And we have our social media channels available on all platforms here. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, is that all are there for the slides coming up? Okay, I hope uh, you guys have covered most of the things that students want to get introduced with. But apart from that, there are a good uh, set of questions or queries that students repeatedly keep on asking about it so before i get into the placement scenarios the job roles that are offered tell us something more about this summer internship and uh, what exactly uh, are the experiences of your seniors have been with the summer internship and uh, ppos i've seen that 30 percent of the ppo have got uh, 30 percent ppo so that is a good number in fact right so tell us something about the summer internship still i guys you you guys have not moved on to the second year so uh, but taking those experiences from seniors, what would you like to share? Or any uh, statistics or data that you would like to share with the summer internship, that would be great. Right. Uh, maybe I can touch upon last year's experience. So from what we have heard and also seen, uh, students had like a very fruitful experience with uh, the industries they got mapped to. And uh, like talking about the pre-placement offers, uh, some of them have got pre-placement from Dr. Eddie's, Amazon, uh, Vodafone. Uh, these are like some big names in the list. Uh, but yes, like in all in all this, the first year course and the curriculum and the kind of experience they get uh, prepares them well enough to do well when they enter the company or like, you know, start working with the industry. So, uh, and that result can be seen over here. So one impression which I got because I was not introduced to these numbers that average batch size or the for the batch size uh, of 34, 36 or whatever it is, 34, let's take it 34, uh, the average work is 44 months. So that is roughly around three and a half years. So can I say that there are very few people uh, who have just crossed the um, work experience of two years or just about two years? There is a mix of both, I would say because i'm uh, i'm having two years of experience there there are many others who have the same or ranging from two years or four years six years like that yeah mm -hmm. it's a good mix yeah so we have quite senior uh, peers as well who have like you know worked extensively but got attracted to the course because of its relevance in the industry uh, right now and uh, thought about upskilling them so like it's a good mix I would say uh, yeah. that would, that would definitely leveraging you guys with a lot of peer to peer learning or peer learning uh, thing at this particular course, which may not the other course would be getting up. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, yeah. uh, yes. So I can so, maybe touch uh, upon that as well a little bit. If you yes. see, uh, like, you know, at least from what we have experienced, each and every course or paper mm -hmm. relies on group assignments and group projects. Uh, you know, like, so you have to work with diverse set of people coming from various industry and that kind of gives you a very different outlook altogether. True, true, true. 
uh, how many i know uh, majorly we see that uh, <clears throat> the courses uh, of management or courses of management are dominated by engineers so uh, if let's talk about your current batch so how many people from uh, engineering background or call it science backgrounds are there and how many people from you know social sciences or humanities background can we see a good because i see you that you have uh, you know you have done your base in mathematics but you had more exposure or you have your complete two years fellowship at tfi so that would have been great and i think you must have been benefited of your tfi uh, experiences during your interviews right so a little more about the diversity as uh, some numbers in the terms of diversity of the people that come for this particular course yeah so it's true that uh, majority of our batch is again uh, dominated by engineers but it's not that again there are people from like humanities as you said and also people from the uh, commerce background and other uh, social sectors as well yeah mm -hmm. fine so uh, how does uh, the course structure is as you guys uh, it has been at i think the semester would have been completed right uh, you guys have moved on to the second semester i guess yes it has just started it has just started so how is the experience of course uh, you know the campus learning this online learning must not be compensating a lot or would not be that equal to that offline learning or the campus learning but how has been your experience in terms of uh, the course curriculum or the overall course of odis as of now okay right yeah yeah sure i can take that up. uh so uh, tala ji so for this semester at least we have like various uh, quite diverse set of courses as well if i have to name you a name a few we have uh, like we have started a leadership as service project which is quite experiential so the methodology that professors and the institute takes is giving you the right experience and also focusing a lot on the reflection what are we getting out of those experiences so that it kind of remains and like you know we have an enduring understanding of the subject so like if we say organization development as such uh, so in leadership as service project we are working closely with the founding members of different social impact organizations where we get access to multiple stakeholders and it's an eight week process uh, where we follow the od map of from you know pre diagnosis contracting to diagnosis then entire map we are supposed to follow and at each stage we are also reflecting a lot as individuals and also as a group uh, so that is the if i have to give you a snapshot of the curriculum it's quite experiential uh, along with that we get also exposed to uh, industry relevant subjects uh, like we have also started operations management uh, this semester along with human resource processes uh, and a lot of focus is also given on organization behavior whether it's at an individual level or at a group level so these are like some courses that we are getting familiar to uh, and yeah along with that we also have you know choice of electives where it might not be connected directly to organization development but you can uh, follow your own passion or like you know from the list of your interest areas like for myself i have chosen intersection of education and development as one of my electives which is which might not be related to human resources or organization development as such but it is kind of my interest Uh, and because we have access to such brilliant faculty in uh, TISS Mumbai, I am like really excited for that course as well. Good. So I'm uh, not talking directly about the placement. Uh, so we have numbers for placement, and that is very uh, clear. We have the average, mean, the highest. So let's uh, not getting into that because that are that is the major concerns for the students these days, or when people look for this term ROI. But talking about the job roles. Uh, throw some light upon the job roles according to the placements or the packages that are offered and what is usually the dream job roles of the students of od that would be great because you know the batch there is a little competition inside the batch when the placement goes on so what is that dream job that everyone's look forward for or i can take that up here yeah. so uh for like you know dream role or aspirations are quite diverse to be honest but uh, they like what the course is preparing us to be are like really exceptional consultants uh, whether it is an internal or an external consultant uh, the course focuses on uh, like you know creating a very value added experience for your clients 
whether you are working as an internal or an external consultant. So those are our major areas. Along with that, uh, we have also focused on human resource, business partners and strategy HR as well. Um, so these are like the broad areas of uh, job opportunities and aspirations. Okay. Uh, one more thing, you know, this is uh, not much relevant because as you guys are in the OD, so your peers must, must be also preparing for the MBA or they are into, you know, uh, good B schools. So uh, how this course is little different than the typical business administration course? Experience wise, oh. or course curriculum wise or experience with the students. How do you see yourself or do you think that you made a a better decision or a good decision and you are enjoying this course comparing with the MBA course. Yeah. So uh, I would take that. So uh, usually the uh, aspirants of MBA, so their focus is majorly on the ROI and the other management and the business part of it. But I think the TISS is different because the, uh, as it is a uh, so social science institute, so it also teaches you or equip, equips you with the uh, uh, the things happening around. So, for example, in the first semester, we had this foundational courses. So, where we uh, talked about or where we learned about the constitution, then the rural development, uh, etc. So, these aspects were covered. So, these are definitely different from the other B schools. Also, uh, this focuses on the dissertation. Like from the first semester itself, the professors. So they tell us the importance of this dissertation, which can which can help us in our careers as well. So I think uh, this dissertation part, uh, I don't think any other uh, management institution focuses more on. Yeah. One more and, thing, you know, I interact. Okay, uh, Kevin, you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just one point, because uh, the course demands a certain minimum amount of experience. So I think, you know, we get a lot of uh, lens from hands-on actual work experience that people are coming from as compared to other management colleges where people there are a lot more freshers as well uh, right so here people have worked they've seen the world and then they're coming and thinking about it so from me who has never seen a corporate side can see the corporate world from so many different lenses and industries that it's adding so much value to my life yeah but what your experience at TFI would be adding a lot of uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, goes, to yeah. uh, uh, goes both ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Uh, now, another one thing uh, that majorly, uh, again, comparing it with the typical MBA, uh, how is your typical day spent these days? Like you are completely burdened with the assignments or you have a lot, got a lot of leverage of time or the luxury of time to go more into the research of whatever you want to study? Uh, yeah, okay. So the typical, uh, so as we have just started with our second semester, I would uh, tell from our experience from the first semester. So uh, definitely it was the hectic uh, schedule, I would say, because the classes would uh, extend for the whole day and then we'll have to uh, do the assignments which were assigned to us. Also, one thing I would say is that according to the course curriculum, the assignments and the other uh, structure is made up. For example, in the first semester, uh, we learned about the individual, uh, like individual behavior or something. So the assignments were based, like individual assignments were more and they were more reflection based. While in the second semester, we had like group dynamics. We are studying the same, like we are uh, yeah, studying this group dynamics thing in there. So in this semester, we have more group assignments and more peer learning happening. So usually the day is like uh, we spend most of the day into our lectures and then we have the assignments to be done and a lot of group activities. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is good. That is good. Uh, this is a fast learning because in two years, you have to go through our roller coaster ride. So definitely, you know, the pace has to be maintained. Uh, mm -hmm. That is good. Uh, one more thing, uh, the last thing. So this comes from the same school as of the uh, very famous HRM course. So uh, uh, what are the various similarities uh, of this course with the HRM course? I think uh, that would be a good thing that we can discuss about it, that how similar or how different it is with the HRM course in terms of course curriculum. Right. So we do have some uh, intersections with human resource as well, because uh, fundamentally both the departments work with human resources, right? 
uh, and have a lot to do with their behavior as well. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what we are doing is slightly different because our work is not just a function, but it goes across the function in an organization. So whether it is with respect to HR itself or uh, uh, like, you know, the technical IT function or any other function in an organization, this process does not, is not defined for a particular function as such. It is, it is across all of them. Right. Uh, so whereas like human resources uh, focuses more on the uh, human management piece and performance and uh, the learning of it, but we are along across it. So uh, the crux of it is both are focusing on the human aspect of the organization and uh, you know, they need to work together for an organization to function and not more separately as such. Okay. One very technical and basic question that, you know, usually students hit up with that uh, because leadership is attached. So students who so much many you know, what sort of leadership roles that people would get into, into corporates. So if you can throw some light uh, with the top type of or the job roles offered at the leadership positions or a jobs of uh, as a leadership in corporate, that will help students who still have, you know, a lot of confusions with this leadership in this particular course. Uh, sure. So uh, there could be a misconception with respect to the word leadership, right? Mm. You know, uh, the leadership does not mean you get into leadership roles as such, but understand what leadership consists of. So whether when you're working with people, it is very important you understand their style of working, right? Only then you can adapt to a client's needs and uh, give them a solution or work with them in a way that is aligned to their style as well. So we understand how to develop leadership at the same time, understand different people's uh, way of working. So that kind of adds more value to the whole process of consulting. Good, good. I hope uh, we have covered everything that uh, usually students have or anything that you guys want to add something that I am missing. And usually students have doubt or you guys would be having doubt when you were preparing or anything that uh, can we extend this session further uh, with strategy to testnet i think there's a okay so tell us something more about the testnet strategy or the preparation strategy because everyone's strategy goes a little different with whatever the edge the person has in the aptitude if so, let's suppose somebody is preparing for mba would focus more on the general awareness if somebody is specifically looking for this premier course of odcl how does one goes about preparing for odcl as of now or in a short span of time what should be the right strategy or the uh, optimized strategy for the same? Yeah, sure. So I'll share my strategy. So strategy would be different from uh, person to person. And uh, so I was working at that time uh, and therefore I had, so one thing was sure that I was going to uh, go for the MBA after this resigning. So I had already started with the apti preparation and uh, keeping the cat in mind. But uh, I couldn't attempt CAT at that time. So uh, I read about this notification about this net and uh, then I decided to go for it. So uh, my major focus was on the 60 marks, which were in control of mine. Uh, that was quantitative aptitude, LR, and the English proficiency. Because if you look at GK, again, it's a vast thing. And even if you try to cover, uh, it won't be under our control. So my strategy was that I focused more on the practicing the quantitative aptitude and logical reasoning questions. Again, the difficulty level is quite on the lower side as compared to other exams. So if the uh, the students if, uh, who are preparing for the CAT and ZAT and SNAP, so it would be uh, good enough for them. Yeah, and for general awareness, I think it would be better if you take or grasp the uh, pattern from the previous exams papers. Yeah, and a lot of uh, free material is already available on public sites. Yeah, so it works. Okay. Kevin, a little different, I guess, your preparation. Were you also preparing for uh, MBA entrances, Kevin? So I uh, had two colleges on top, uh, and both were related to the kind of field I am in. And this was one of uh, you know, can you hear me? Can I yes. Stuff? Yeah. Uh, awesome. So yeah, so ODCL was one of my top priorities when I was thinking of masters because I took quite some time to decide what exactly to study 
uh, as my post graduation course right so like mathematics and quant was already my expertise but what i focused on uh, was general awareness and for that i just read uh, a lot of newspaper as well as uh, these books manorama year book and any general awareness general books that you get online as well but my strategy was i started with a lot of question papers first just to understand my own uh, level right now and focused on tis uh, tiss tisnet difficulty level and post that i built my own strategy so uh, honestly even i had prepped only for a uh, maximum of 2 months maybe uh, for the exam overall but not more than that uh, so yeah relatively low on difficulty but definitely the game changer is the general awareness uh, section if somebody is good at aptitude i in fact 2 months is more than sufficient to get through this uh, particular uh, course cut off right um yeah. good it was uh, good uh, interacting with you guys i think um, a lot of information uh, have come up for for, for odc and a lot of misinformation would have been evaded so i uh, will record this session and try to put it on youtube channel so that more and more people can benefit from it and uh, you guys are always available also i'll share your uh, social media profiles of this particular um, uh, course so that those students who have doubt regarding the course can reach is that fine you guys uh, absolutely our aspirations and alumni relation team is very proactive and you can reach out to them even on pagal guy uh, they have a id so yeah fine 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 so that is great thanks uh, kevin thanks ankita and the coordinator for uh, uh, taking up this session it would be really very helpful to aspirants who are looking forward for the odcl course or having a second thought about the odcl course right thank you great pleasure